Good morning everyone, welcome to Bruins Farm. Today is the next day after the hometown farmer's market, so we gotta unload truck. But first, I kinda just wanna do a walk around, check if anything needs water, water if it needs it, and then we can get started on that job. Right here, inside the door, is the giant six foot sunflowers. And they are doing awesome. And the funny thing about this is, which happens a lot, is when we didn't have these, everybody was asking, you know, when are we gonna have them? You know, when are they gonna come to market? And we kind of gave them a pretty good estimate. And now that we started bringing them, I started taking like three flats, and we only sell one. So it's just kind of funny the way things work. And the reason they're not selling is definitely not because they're not beautiful, because as you can see, they're about as nice as they could possibly get. But I'm sure we'll sell them all. As far as the vine crops go, what you see right here will get us through about one more day, maybe two, and that's good, because, and that's exactly what I try and do, because then, or hopefully by then, all of our, I think, fourth or fifth planting of the vine crops will be coming on. What's really cool about number one is that it's really emptying out fast. The only thing that makes it look so full is all of our seed geraniums, because we have this whole lot right here, that whole lot right there, this whole lot right here, and then that whole lot along the back wall is all seed geraniums as well. You take those out of here, and this is gonna be pretty empty. And now is when they're finally just coming into blossom, and we're taking a couple that are flowering here and there, but soon, every single one is gonna be flowering, and then we can really start pushing them. Finally, my favorite colored New Guinea patients are coming out. It's like a pinkish with like a red accent. My mom even does some hangers in them down there. And this is the other New Guineas, which is nice, but not quite as nice to me. Another awesome thing is I finally got one of my favorite baskets in the greenhouse to the size I would like to see it at, which is completely covering that hanging basket. And it's just so full of all the different colors, which I love. The only color I think it's missing is the white, but we could always add that in if we wanted to. These actually came as a plug and we just planted the whole thing all at one time. Like I said, we're definitely not perfect at greenhouses. We're still learning every single year. I tried some new things this year when doing all the planting and the seeding. I tried planting a lot of stuff earlier, that way it was ready earlier and we didn't have to go to market so later in the season because I was hoping we could sell a little bit faster. But some things I found out was just too much, not because we really couldn't sell it, but because we just didn't have the room in the greenhouse and we couldn't get it planted. Now we have the room, but now it's getting to be too late, so we're just gonna have to get rid of it. And some of those things include English and German thyme, petunias, here is some Greek oregano, balloon flowers, portulacas, dusty millers, sweet marjoram, some lupines, and the curly parsley. Really, that's not much compared to what we do, but it is a shame to throw all those beautiful seedlings away. So I just went out to Nathan's, which is the guy who planted our field corn last year and got our leftover fertilizer. Dad wanted me to go out to get that because he's gonna be using it pretty soon. I don't really know exactly what the fertilizer is for. I don't think it's for sweet corn. It might be for onions or something of that sort that we're gonna be planting here pretty quick. Maybe potatoes, I don't really know. But I'm gonna get back over here to the greenhouse, finish up watering, and then we can finally start unloading truck. Dace, come here. What are you doing? Huh? Tomatoes in the high tunnel are doing awesome. Take a walk in here quick and check them out. I'm sure the other three rows that they didn't do about two days ago are gonna have to be done either today or tomorrow. Yeah, looks pretty close. This one actually looks a little bit wilty almost, but the ground is wet, so it can't be wilty. Maybe it's just from the wind blowing up on it. So you can see those, well this row, this row, and this row all have three strings. This row and the other two rows over there don't need it. And we kind of assume that the middle three rows grow faster just because they're not on the edge and they're not quite as wet all the time. All right, so we got truck unloaded, went home, ate lunch, and grabbed the seeds now for the field. We're gonna be getting our cantaloupe and I think watermelon seeded today. 
which will just be the first batch. They need to go in before like the pickles and cucumbers and zucchini because they just take a little bit longer. And so I'm basically gonna do it the same exact way that we do the ones for retail sales, except instead of putting them in a singles, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be putting them in three packs or four packs. I don't exactly know yet, I gotta talk to Dad. We're getting fertilizer delivered right now. You can see it getting poured into the gravity bin at the moment. It's amazing how much fertilizer that can empty at one time. So like I was saying, all these watermelons are gonna go in four packs. I just got two trays filled here. I need about nine altogether. I'm gonna go to my bigger seeding soil or potting soil, get these filled up. Then I'll make my impressions and then I'll cover them back up with a light seeding soil. But I'll show you all that in a minute. Alright, so the next step is making my impressions. I'm gonna take the same tray that I'm putting them into and just, you know, press it down. Try and do an even of a job as I possibly can, which it's never perfect. And I wanna make sure I go deep enough because if not, they'll kinda of just poke right back out of the soil as soon as they either get watered or start to grow. Anywhere from like a half inch to three quarters of an inch is what I'm looking for. So this is the first variety, which is a yellow seedless watermelon, kind of like a bluish teal. And so just like before, three seeds in each one. I don't want them on top of each other. Sometimes I do accidentally drop a fourth one, but I will pick it out because it's just not necessary. Also, if they're laying on top of each other, I'll move them. There, we got a fourth one. And so as you can see, it's very similar to actually more the string beans than zucchini, just because these are going in four packs as well. All right, so now I got all my seeds in there. I got them spaced the way I want them. I'm gonna take my seeding soil, which like I said is a lot finer than my potting soil. None of those big chunks or sticks or anything like that. And I'll just lightly Put a layer over top. Just like that. And then once I have enough, take my hand and slowly feather it out over until everything is nice and even. I just gotta be careful I don't pull those seeds right back out of that cell. So I can try and be a little bit gentle. Maybe put a little bit more right there. And that's it. I'll put a tag in there, and now it's ready to grow. Like I said, the most important thing is that you don't want to have that seed too deep. You have it too deep, it might not grow, and it'll just never come up. So other than that, it's pretty simple. If you have it too close to the top, what's gonna to happen is it's kind of just gonna shoot right back out. And you can usually just kind of push it right back down with your finger, cover it back up with some more soil, and it's good to go. But it's just easier to go, like I said, that half inch, three quarters of an inch, and it should be just fine. So up next, after I'm done with the watermelon, is now the pollinator, which is called Ace Plus. Pollinators will not produce an actual watermelon. It's just to benefit the watermelon plant itself. And so how it works is, when the bees are buzzing around pollinating flowers, they transfer 
nectar, or actually I was looking it up, it's not actually nectar, but pollen grains they call it here on Google, from the watermelon plant or from the pollinator plant to the watermelon plant. And then that obviously pollinates the watermelon and that's how it grows. And it says here that they need to receive 500 to 1,000 pollen grains to produce one marketable melon, which is pretty cool. And to go into even finer detail, it says that that'll take around eight visits by a honeybee for a seeded watermelon. Now these are seedless watermelons, so it says the pollen produced by seedless watermelons is not viable. So I think that means when you have seeded watermelon, which is what we sell just for retail sales, like the actual plant itself, you just need a bee to hit that plant and you're good to go. But when you have a seedless watermelon plant, you need a pollinator and then you need the pollen grains to be transferred from the pollinator to the actual watermelon plant. And basically it means just because you do a good job with the right growing conditions and the right fertilizer, doesn't mean you're gonna get a good watermelon plant if you're not getting that pollinator. And so there's actually, I think like certain cotton swabs or some sort of brush you can get to basically poke inside, like if you just have a home garden, to poke inside a pollinator plant and then poke it inside the watermelon plant. That way you can pollinate your own flowers if for some reason you don't have honeybees or I don't know, even bumblebees or anything like that in your area. I know it always says specifically honeybees. I don't know if bumblebees can't do it. I don't really know the specifics, but that's basically, well, just the basics. And just like the regular watermelon, I'm gonna be doing three seeds per cell and these will even look like a watermelon plant. They just, like I said, will not produce an actual watermelon. And if they do, which I think, because sometimes they, they will produce one in a rare occasion, but they're really weird and goofy. So I just finished up these here and that back row there. It's gonna take them a little while to grow, but in the meantime, we'll probably get the cantaloupe planted as well. And it won't be too long. We'll be doing the pickles, you know, cucumber, zucchini, all that kind of stuff, but that's still gonna be a couple weeks off. So it's the next day, just go down here to the farm. Me and mom are gonna be working on making some hanging basket geraniums. So she's gonna be working on planting as I work on filling. And how the hanging baskets work is, you've got this little plastic insert, which goes right in the bottom. That way, when you fill this up with dirt, this bottom portion, it's like an inch, maybe not quite, maybe only like a half inch, can sit full of water when you water it. And let's just say you don't water it for a good portion of the day. Well, now that water can soak up into the dirt and you know keep your basket watered. It's a good idea, doesn't work that great, but that's the whole point of it. Also, if this wasn't here, then this would just be sitting full of water all the time. And that's just not good for the roots or the plant. And so basically just like everything else, I'm gonna take my dirt, get this filled up, level it out, and that's it right there. I'm not saying if you didn't have that insert, your flower is gonna die, but it's pretty important. And so when you buy the box, they give you these with the hangers, or actually with the pot, then you have to buy the hangers separate. I guess because maybe some people just wanna put it like this on the front porch, but we always obviously buy the hangers so we can put them up in our greenhouse and then the people can decide what they want to do with it when they get it to their home. Here they are complete. I think she did all solid colors like red. I don't know if that's salmon. There's like a pink. We do grow a bullseye mix. I think that is multiple colors, but they aren't blooming yet. So I don't think she planned any of those. And we don't exactly know what we're going to sell them for yet. We're gonna figure that out tonight. You can see there's three different geraniums in each pot. So I just got in here to the blue shed with our cousin's tractor. If you guys have been watching, you'll know we do this every single year. And the reason we use this tractor is because it can go a lot slower than any of our other tractors because we plant onions so close. And if we don't go that slow, we just can't get as many in for the spacing we wanna put them at. And so this is just a Yanmar 2610 and it works absolutely perfect for us. The only thing we have to change is the back tires 
because the spacing is too wide to fit in our rows. And so we just flip these around and then it fits perfectly. Okay, so the tires are flipped around. Gotta tighten them down yet. And then this is ready to go. Then I'll have to run over to the barn where we have the planter and get that greased and we should be ready to go. So mom had to go out to the market and work unexpectedly, meaning I had to come back to the greenhouses and work on getting them watered. And that just didn't leave us with anybody extra to get to the field to start planting onions. With that being said, that's what I'm gonna call it a wrap for today. As always, thank you guys for watching and always remember it ain't much, but it's honest work.